What's up folks, from the same author, of Florida Man Deku, welcome to the part 1, of What If Deku, followed the anarchist way. Chapter 1, the beginning 3 years ago there was a once a quirkless green hair boy named Izuku Madriya who lived in a world of quirks, but he was one of the few who didn't have a quirk. He bullied and looked down upon by others. He had no friends because of his quirklessness, and his father left him and his mom at age 4 because of it. One day, his main tormentor Bakugo was going to give him his usual abuse which Izuku snapped and fought back against Bakugo. Izuku was at a disadvantage because Bakugo had two other henchmen with him and he was quirkless. After a cruel beating they left Izuku. Izuku got up in pain, he though himself, Kakan as abusive as ever. If those two weren't there I could have one. I need to learn how to fight. Then a few days later, he found an underground, fighting ring and decided to learn to fight from people who actually knew how to fight. A few weeks later he met an old man who used to be a famous boxer and learned from him how to box, and his Yuku loved to box. He would come home tired and hungry, but he was happy because he was getting stronger. When Bakugo and his goons were going to attack Izuku like they normally do, Izuku broke their bones, and Bakugo was left with broken hands. The police put Izuku in jail for a week, which after Izuku got out he went back to the fighting ring for a good time. A year later, he was known as the quirkless wonder in the ring because of his skill and he has won matches and lost some but had more wins than losses. He was chaotic in and out of the ring. With his winnings he bought weapons for protection, and beat some petty criminals up, he was known as the anarchist. One day he met a man with a bird mask which is Yuku said, hello there, mister. The man said, overhaul, I like the way you fight. Tell me what is your quirk? Is Yuku said, I don't care if you believe me but I'm quirkless. Overhaul's eyes widen, you're quirkless? Well I didn't expect that. Anyways how about you work for me? Izuku, raised an eyebrow, what kind of work? Quirk analysis? Muscle? Weapons? Izuku handed over Hall a notebook full of the quirks of pro heroes, villains, vigilantes, and the other fighters in the ring. Overhaul was in awe and said, I would like all of your skills. Izuku smiled, I'll work for you, but I have some conditions. Overhaul looked at him. What are these conditions? Izuku said, I have, free control over what I do, I'm not forced to kill but you can use the notes to kill, and lastly I would like an apartment nearby so transport could be easier. Overhaul responded, deal. Overhaul thought to himself, I like his skills in fighting and quirk analysis, he is going to lead me to success. But what Overhaul didn't know was Izuku was going to make him and a few other underground. Boss is very successful. Present day is Yuku, age 15, walked into the ring to face his next opponent which is Yuku looked at the blonde hair and Tintin looking face to it into his eyes. Is Yuku went to attack but his attacks went through him then he saw him go through the ground and come back up, which is Yuku recognized him and yelled, get out of here everyone. IT's Lemillion and he most likely has, police outside about to break in. Everyone looked at Lamillion and realized Izuku was right, Izuku yelled, K, get me the fuck out of here. K, overhaul, went up to the cage to make spikes to keep Lamillion busy and get Izuku out of the cage, then everyone got out of the building. The police and a few heroes were outside waiting for them, which Izuku got his wooden baseball bat, taser baton, stun grenades, and smoke grenades to help get the two out of there. When they were in the clear they walked over to the base, which is Yuku said, that was a close one. Kai said, tell me about it, if you didn't recognize Lemillion, I don't think we would be here. Is Yuku said, that is what you pay me for Kai. That, figuring out enemy quirks, and taking care of Yuri. Kai laughed, if it wasn't for, you, Yuri wouldn't be able to control her quirk and we wouldn't have made our quirk erasing bullets faster than predicted. Izuku chuckled, I really think we should give the League of Villains a chance, I already met their leader and guy behind them, all for one. Kai stopped in his traces, wait, you met the immortal villain? Izuku said, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we play chess and do, 
quirk analysis together. I also discuss politics with him, very interesting guy. Kai asked, you think we should ally with them? Izuku said, yeah, but between you and me. Tomori the leader of the league give him a chance to explain. He may be childish, but he is intelligent and learns quickly. Kai nodded and Izuku looked at his watch, well speaking of the devil, I about to get warped to all, for one in about 10 seconds. A purple mist appears and a purple mist man in a bartender suit appeared, which is Yuku said, Hello Kuragiri, how has it been? Kuragiri replied, Not much, Sensei wanted to see you. Is Yuku smiled and said, Well Kai, I better get going. Taliri I said hi as Yuku jumped in the portal to appear in all for one's lair, which is Yuku said, Hello all for one, how have you, been feeling? All for one chuckled in his chair. I'm still stuck on this chair and can only move for about 3 hours a day. But seeing you and your bag of tricks, I graceful you are here. Izuku pulled out one of his notebooks and said, So I found a few quirks you might be interested in, with names and locations of the owners. Then Izuku sat in his chair and all for one said, You always pull, through Izuku, I am more impressed each time I open your notebooks. Izuku said, Thanks dad. The room was quite which as Yuka was scaried, a foe, all for one, asked, Did you call me dad? As Yuku got up to bow, I'm sorry sensei that I have offended you, please don't turn me into a Namu. A foe confused, I'm not going to turn you into a Namu. But you really see me as a father figure? As Yuku said, You, see? My dad left me and my mom when I was four, when I learned I was quirkless. So, I didn't have a father figure in my life, but the way you support me and help me. I do see you as a father figure. Afo chuckled. I guess between you and me, you can call me dad in this room. Izuku looked up and said, okay dad. Afo chuckled, so son, is the wound that All Might has still there the last time you checked? Izuku said, yeah, it's still there. One year ago as Yuka was walking around collecting information on quirks for his boss Kai and a few other people. A slime man attacked him and thought he was a good meat suit until he blew off of him. As Yuka woke up to find All Might has saved him, as Yuka quickly got up to check his notebook had All Might's signature. As Yuka was about to ask All Might his, lifelong question, but All Might was about to jump until as Yuka grabbed his leg and flew into the sky. All Might landed and Izuku saw All Might's weak in form. Izuku saw it and All Might explained his injury, Izuku asked him, All Might, can a quirkless nobody like me be a hero? All Might looked at Izuku and said, No, hero work is too dangerous for quirkless people. You can be a policeman, Izuku walked off as All Might said those words, Izuku ran home, and slammed the door. Izuku went to pick up the books that fell off the shelf and found this D&D book open to the chaotic neutral alignment. After reading what a chaotic neutral person would be, he said, I know what I should be, a life of freedom, and I can continue what I love to do. But I should probably live in that apartment, Overhaul gave me. That is when he ran away, and he fully left himself live a life of crime, fun, and freedom present is Yuku has been watching All Might in his civilian form and saw who his potential successors were and gave Afo the information on them but as Yuku wants something in return. Afo smiled, you still want the Namu or something else? Is Yuku said, I would love information on my father's whereabouts. Afo pulled out a file, what are you going to do when you find him? Is Yuku smiled, I going to beat his ass until he learns his mistake. Then they played chess and discussed the politics of today's world and as Yuku said, well I guess I should go do my other things, well don't push yourself too hard. Afo laughed and as Yuku was warped to his apartment, his apartment was brick walls, wooden floors, a living room, two bedroom, kitchen, one restroom, and room where he stores his weapons. As Yuku said, okay. I'm going to take an hour long break then I'm heading out to bash some skulls and talk to the smugglers and slavers. Later that night, he went to Hazu to meet his favorite nighttime customers, the slavers and smugglers. They rely on people like Izuku to price people by the, 
quirks and their usefulness, which is Yuku is known in the underworld as the best person to go to for quirk analysis. Izuku went to a meat market to go to the counter to say, Hi, I'm looking for a New York Ribe, extra thick. The clerk took him to the back to a secret elevator which sent him down to the secret storage and auction of the slaves. A fat man looked and said, Anarchist, it's great to, see you. Izuku smiled, Mr. Gates, you don't have to call me that. You give me money to give you a value for these slaves, just call me Izuku. Mr. Gates chuckled, OK is Yuku, so I brought a new batch tonight, but I don't know about this child right here. Mr. Gates pointed at a child in one of the cages, which is Yuku asked, what is his problem? Mr. Gates said, he wouldn't reveal his quirk, so, I was hoping you would help us. Is Yuku went over to the kid and said, well kid if I were you, I would reveal your quirk now before I force you to reveal it. The kid looked at him. How can you force people to reveal a quirk? Izuku said, easy. Izuku grabbed and squeezed a certain part of the kid's neck to make him shoot out some black tentacles which stabbed into a guard and force his quirk to activate. Izuku said, his quirk is force quirk activation and I want to buy him. Mr. Gates surprised, I thought you don't buy slaves or support it. Izuku said, you right, but I like this kid and his quirk. I will price him around 1 million yen. I buy him from you for 1,500,000. Mr. Gates smiled, done. After the paperwork and other stuff, is Yuku now on the boy, which is Yuku asked him, what is your name? The boy said, gone is Yuku said, gone, I'm about to feed you until you hunger is satisfied, and you will be a student of mine. Is Yuku took gone to his apartment to feed him and put him in his other bedroom. Izuku then said, I'm going to be gone for a little bit, but I will be back in a little bit. Gon fell asleep and Izuku went out to beat up some thugs because it was his entertainment. Izuku found some thugs surrounding a teen girl and what looks like her father which Izuku pulled out his baseball bat and taser baton to get them from behind. Izuku went behind the leader to tap his shoulder. The leader turns around for his face to meet a baseball bat to the face. The rest of the thugs turned around and one of them said, Guys, it the anarchist. The thugs looked at him and saw, that he was the guy, which is Yuku said, Okay here you little cum stains, you can turn around or all hell will break loose. The thugs ran off leaving as Yuku, the teen, and her father, which the father said, Thank you mister. Is Yuku said, Oh sorry, I'm the anarchist, nice to meet you. Is Yuku shook the father's hand, which the teen asked, why did you help us? Izuku said, because I beat up thugs, for my entertainment. The father and teenager looked at him like Izuku was crazy. Izuku asked, are you too lost? I can give you direction Mr. and Miss. The father said, oh, how rude of me I'm David Shield and this is my daughter Melissa. We are lost, do you know directions to a person known here as Yogi T? Then a blonde muscled man landed next to them and said, Dave, I am here. Is Yuku in? Sarcasm said, Oh look, he man showed up late to save these people and die, a quirkless nobody who you say can't be a hero, save them like a hero. Well I'm off to a baseball game. David surprise, what? All Might said, Young Madriya, let me explain. Izuku turned around and walked away backwards with both his middle fingers in the air and said, Hey I an idea. Why don't you just take that, symbol of peace bullshit and shove it really far up your ass then clench your ass cheeks. All Might said, Young Madriya language. Melissa asked, Uncle Might, do you know him? Izuku said, Yeah, he knows me. He destroyed my dream. But those dreams needed to be destroyed anyways. All Might said, Young Madriya, I need to talk to you. Izuku texted Kuragiri to open a warp gate from his location to his apartment, which when Kuragiri opened it, Izuku looked at All Might to say, Oh, all for one said, Hi Izuku jumped in the portal leaving All Might falling to his knees yelling na ooh. Izuku was back at his apartment and said, I had enough fun for one day. I guess I'm going to sleep. Tomorrow I have tea with Gentle, 
video games with Tamora, take Eri to the playground, and help Grant selling weapons to villains and vigilantes. Is Yuko got in his pajamas and fell fast asleep ready for tomorrow? Chapter 2, Weekend Madness Part 1 Weekend Madness Part 1 is Yuku got up and said, It's Saturday, thank God. Is Yuku made him and Gon breakfast which Gon asked, What are we going to do? Is Yuku interrupted Gon, Don't call me master, call me as Yuku or Nissan. Gon asked, Again, what are we doing today as Yuku? Is Yuku said, Well today you are going to learn what I do and you are going to get into the business. Gon asked, Business? Is Yuku said, Of being a bad guy but not evil, like good villain or bad vigilante or something like that. Gon asked, Am I going to kill people? Is Yuku looked at him, No, I don't kill people. On purpose. Gon scared which is Yuku said, But you're not killing people. We are going to get you an outfit and some clothes. Then I'm going to have a meeting with an extremely nice gentleman, then hang out with a buddy, and you will have a play day with my goddaughter. Gon was happy about that which after they ate, they head out to their busy day. They went to a tailor shop that is Yuku as a common customer to get Gon's size and clothes. Gon's outfit was the like is Yuku's outfit which was a black leather trench coat with a green dress shirt with a red tie and black jeans. The difference was Gon had a white dress shirt and a black tie to match his hair which is Yuku paid 11,141,450 yen for it. They left to head to a coffee and tea shop which is Yuku saw his guy and said, Hey Danjiro, lovely day we are having. Danjiro, gentle criminal, smiled, nice to see you as Yuku, I see you brought someone with you. Is Yuku chuckled, this is Gon. He is my student and will get into my business to help me out. Izuku looked at the girl next to him, lovely to see you too, Manami. Manami was happy to see Izuku which she said, it's very nice to see you. You are the very few nice people that are villains like us. Izuku laughed, ah, you're funny, as usual. How is the internet treating you too? Danjiro said, it's okay. Izuku said, hey if you two still want. We can rob a bank together the offer is still on the table. A good bank robbery is a good way to really catch attention and I heard there is going to be special jewelry there. The two looked at him, which Danjiro spoke, we'll think about it, how are you doing with your many jobs, is Yuku said, amazing, I have some quirky racing drugs if you two want some and the new league of villains is about to move to do their first appearance. They talked for a while until Gan said, is Yuku. Your meeting with Tamura is coming up soon. Izuku got up to say, Well I better get going, I wish you two luck in becoming famous. Also that offer is still on the table, remember it doesn't involve, hurting people or killing, just a simple grab and go. Danjiro said, That is very appealing, we might consider the offer. Kuragi reopened a portal for Gon and Izuku to walk into, which Izuku asked. Kuragiri, can you watch Gon for me? Kuragiri nodded and Izuku went to Tom Moore's room to play video games with. The only people who actually have gone into Tom Moore's room without pissing him off are, Izuku, Afo, and Kuragiri. When Izuku got in he said, Tom Moore, you're looking like you're having fun. Tom Moore said, Izuku hurry help me, I'm about to enter the boss room. Izuku got on his laptop to game with Tom Moore. Izuku played as a sorcerer and Tamura was a normal swordsman. Izuku would use his spells to attack, heal, and boost Tamura, while Tamura did the attacking and defending Izuku. After, they defeated the boss, Izuku said, Tamura, your plan of attacking is genius. Even if you don't kill All Might, you still win. Tamura stopped what he was doing to ask, what do you mean? Izuku said, Think about it and bear with me here. You bring a group of villains to one of the most secure locations on the planet without triggering the alarms, that will ruin his reputation. If I don't, no. All Might wasn't there, and you injure the teachers and students who are there, that ruins not only I but also All Might's reputation because he was supposed to be there to protect his students from injury. And if your Namu doesn't kill All Might and you and Kuragi re-escape, 
then All Might failed to capture the villains who broke into the and injure his students which leads people to lose their trust in All Might, the teachers, and the students who are there. Tom Orr's eyes were wide open, I never saw it like that. Thank you as you coo. You really opened my eyes on this one, I should start looking at situations like you. As you coo said, we're friends, we help each other and support each other. Just like our team work in the boss fight you have higher attack, but I can boost you, and heal you to help us win the fight. I also grow with you as well from the battle. The two continued which no one knows that a foe has a camera in Tom Mora's room which he grew a smile that Tom Mora's growth has accelerated since him and Izuku have interacted with each other. Izuku has said that Tom Mora is smart and is a quick learner which this interaction is proof. After a while Izuku had to leave, for Iri's play day which he gave Tamora the quirks and weakness of the teachers and students, ok Tamora, here is everything you need to know about the people you're going to meet. Remember if you fail to kill All Might, you still won at the end of the day. Tamora smiled, I will, thank you Izuku. Kuragi reheard dropped a glass cup when he heard Tamora say those words, that is what Kuragi loved about Izuku. Izuku is helping Tamora act like an adult and it really helps Kuragiri a lot, which Kuragiri and Afo will do anything to help Izuku if he was in danger. Izuku was warped to Kai's place and he saw Iri with Hari, Krenastasis, which Izuku said, Hey Hari. Hari said, Hey Izuku, you look busy. The two laughed and Izuku said, I don't want to be bored and I love being busy. Iri, jumped to Izuku and cheerfully said, Uncle Izuku. Izuku hugged her, Hello Iri, how you are doing? Iri said, Guess what? Izuku asked, What? Iri said, Yesterday, they found another way to make quirk erasing stuff yesterday. Izuku surprised, Really? Hari said, Yeah, we found out last night and we were going to tell you later. Izuku said, That's great and I assume it's faster. Hari nodded and Izuku said, well I better be off to take her to the park. The park gun was meeting Iri's friends and Izuku was watching them, he brought plenty of snacks for the two and himself. Izuku was relaxing and enjoying the weather until he heard, you. He looked up to see Lemillion coming to him in his civilian outfit, which Izuku sighed, Mirio, I just watching my little brother and god, daughter. Why are you here off duty, Mirio said. You can't just call me by my name, anarchist. Izuku said, then call me by real name which is Izuku and come on your off duty sit down. Miru sat down next to Izuku and asked, Izuku, why are you working for overhaul? Izuku raised an eyebrow, Kai? Well he's a good friend, boss, and is the first person in my life didn't discriminate me for being quirkless. Miru's eyes were wide. You're quirkless? Izuku chuckled, yep and that is the face that everyone makes when I tell them that. But I am proud to be quirkless. Mirio laid back into his seat which Izuku asked, is the reason you are relaxed now because you think a quirkless nobody like me can't hurt you? Mirio jolted, no. I just don't think you're the guy to beat up an off duty hero who hasn't attacked you in front of, the kids. Izuku smirked, smart. I like that. I want to see that in All Might's successor. Mirio wasn't feeling relaxed around Izuku at all. What do you mean? Izuku said, I know about one for all, the only people besides Sir Dickhead and Muscle Man are the creator of the quirk all for one, little o Lamy, all for one's prodigy, and my good friend Kai. Mirio asked, why are you saying this out, loud for people to hear? Izuku said, because I don't give a fuck. A lady nearby said, Sir language there are kids here. Izuku said, Sorry madam. Izuku looked at his watch and said, Well time to take them home, nice to finally talk to you Mirio. I hope you are a better person than All Might. Mirio said, I know what he said to you. Izuku stopped which Mirio said, Let him say his. Apology. Izuku said, If he was really sorry, he would let me break one of his legs. Mirio, in shock, WHY? Izuku said, it will make me feel better and it's symbolic. Think about he broke my heart, soul, 
and dream, I break at least one leg or both then he will feel my pain then. Until recovery girl repairs it. Is Yukutoki re back home and got back to the apartment to feed Gon, he said, okay, my night jobs are dangerous, so you are staying here. Gon nodded as Yuku wrote down a phone number to call him from the landline and tucked him to sleep. Some back alley as Yuku was walking until he saw his business partner. The man said, Is Yuku, I'm glad you came. Is Yuku hummed, Grin, my business partner, of course I will come to help you. We make money together so what are we doing tonight? Grin said, Well we are going to see the Nauru Auto Vigilantes and a few others. Is Yuku said, Awesome. Let's get this bread. Grin shrugged, I still don't know what you kids are saying these days. They walked around to find this small group of vigilantes which Knuckle Duster said, Grin and Anarchist? Grin shrugged, what he is my business partner you have a problem with that? Is Yuku asked, you have something with quirkless people? Knuckle Duster said, I'm quirkless, of course I have no problem with quirkless people. The other two vigilantes were surprised that Izuku was quirkless just like their leader, which Izuku said, respect, and you two must be the crawler and pop. Step. The crawler went up to Izuku with shining eyes, he got it right, thank you. Izuku said, okay. Back, up please, personal space my dude. The crawler said, sorry. They did their trade and Grin said, since you're here Izuku. You want to sell you quirk analysis with them. Pop Step asked, Quirk analysis? Grin said, He is the best person in the underworld at it. He can look at your quirk and break it down, then find ways to improve it and find weaknesses. He sells his notes about them too, Knuckle Duster said, Can we see? Izuku chuckled and pulled out Pop Step and the crawler's pages, which the three were in shock by how accurate it was, which crawler? Fuck it, asked, do you have more? Is Yuku and Grin laughed their asses off, which Grin mocked Crawler, do you eat Chave M more? Which after a few seconds, Grin said, he has an entire library of quirks of heroes, villains, vigilantes, and other people of interest. Is Yuku said, I had to buy an entire warehouse of it. The vigilantes jaws dropped to the ground from the statement which is Yuku recomposed himself, sorry about that, but which people are you looking for? Knuckle Duster said, Ku and Hikijuka is Yuku said, oh, I have that one on me. Is Yuku flipped a few pages to find her and pulled her out then said, that will be, 10,000 yen. They gave him the money to is Yuku and Knuckle Duster said, nice doing business with you anarchist. Is Yuku said, let me know if you know a good underground ring to go to. I love a good fight. Crawler asked, you watch those? Grin said, no kid, he actually fights in them and he is pretty good fighter. Knuckle Duster asked, if you have free time, I would like you to help me train, this one. Izuku said, hell yeah sure. Izuku and Grin walked off in the darkness which Grin said, I think we are going to get more money from them in the future. Izuku said, good, I love the underworld these days. Grin said, I feel like one day, Tamoria will become a great villain like Sensei keeps saying. Izuku said, Tamoria came from a tragic past which can make a powerful villain. I, believe so too. Grin said, you are a powerful person yourself, what is your secret for that? Izuku chuckled, like all quirkless people, we are weaker at birth. I became strong because I came from the weakest any human today can ever come from and I decide to become strong. Then went off into the darkness. All Might's apartment David and Melissa were still upset with Yagi after he told them, the story of his Yuku Madraya, Yagi said, Dave. David said, Yagi, I know you were trying to protect him, but you destroyed his dream as well as you know me and Melissa are quirkless. I mean I made your suits and helped you become the hero you became today. Then the door opened and Mirio yelled, all Might. Yagi asked, What is it young Mirio? Are you okay? Mirio said, No, the Anarchist knows, about one for all and he said many other people know about it. Yagi asked, What do you mean many other people? 
Murio told his story of his conversion with his yuku at the park, which All Might's jaw dropped which David knew All Might was in trouble. David asked, that is you quirk? All Might decided to tell the story of one for all to David and Mirio which Mirio and David were in shock about its dark history. Then David asked, wait a minute, you were formerly quirkless yourself? Yagi said, I'm sorry Dave, it was for you and Melissa's safety for you not to know. Melissa was in another room listening to the conversion, she got angrier from the fact her uncle not only believing quirkless people couldn't be heroes, but he was formerly quirkless. She went out through the window to go down, the stairs and ladder for a walk to clear her head. She walked around until a large thug grabbed her and said, What is a beauty do? He got knocked out by his Yuku's bat which he said, You're welcome ma. They looked at each other which his Yuku said, We need to stop meeting like this. Melissa asked, Did you know Uncle Might was formerly quirkless? His Yuku said, Sensei told me after a week I met him, which is also two weeks before All Might Detroit smashed my dreams. Melissa asked, who is Sensei? Izuku asked, do you want to know? Melissa nodded and Izuku said, all for one Melissa gasped, you mean the man who created the quirk? Izuku nodded, then asked, you want me to walk you home? Melissa said, no, I want to clear my head for a little bit. Izuku said, I will walk around with you because you are just a trouble magnet and I love it. The two walked around the block which Melissa would ask a couple of questions to Izuku about every few minutes. Then Izuku took her back to the apartment which Melissa said, thank you for walking me around. Izuku said, no problem. Melissa asked, so you're quirkless? Izuku said, since birth Melissa said, you're not that bad of a guy, you know. Izuku chuckled. You're funny. Then Melissa kissed him on the cheek, then the door opened to where Yagi, David, and Miru stood there to find the two. Izuku said, this is my cue to haul ass. Izuku started running while Miru was chasing him, Izuku pulled out a stun grenade to buy some time, which Izuku then pulled out a grappling hook to climb up the building and said, sorry, Lemillion, not today. Izuku continued to run off into the night. David asked Melissa, are you okay? Melissa said, he saved me again and he gave me some helpful answers to my questions. Yagi looked at his Yuku running into the night as his Yuku was a reminder of his greatest failure. Melissa liked his Yuku because he was brave and he didn't care he was quirkless, he helped however he can kind of like a hero. She smiled as he ran into the darkness, which Lemillion said, sorry all might, I couldn't catch him. Yagi said, it's alright young Mirio, we will get him when we get him. Chapter 3, Weekend Madness Part 2 Izuku checked his Sunday schedule which consisted of two things that Izuku wanted to do. Izuku looked at Gon, today, I'm going to send you to play with Diri, but remember Kai is a germaphobe so try to be clean as you can and if he said you're dirty just clean yourself again. But Kai is actually nice when you get to know him and also try to never get Iri near the room. Gon nodded and asked, what are you doing? Izuku said, just a personal thing I have been meaning to take care of and a really good friend and I are going to wreck some stuff. After Izuku dropped Gon off, he got his weapons for this little project he was about to go to. He then texted Kuragiri to warp him to the location and he stepped through to find a nice house in a small town in North Japan. Izuku walked up to the door and saw the sign on the door that reads, Midraya Residence, make yourself at home. Izuku chuckled. I guess I will. He knocked on the door, which he heard a man said, I'll get it. The door opened to reveal a tall man with green eyes and hair looked at Izuku to ask, Hello, how can I help you? Izuku asked, are you Hisashi Midraya? Hisashi said, yeah. Izuku chuckled. I guess I finally get to meet you. Dad. Hisashi's eyes were wide open, which Hisashi's wife asked, who is it Hisashi? Hisashi couldn't say a word, which Izuku said, oh, just his first son that he abandoned because he was quirkless. Hisashi said, give me a moment dear. Hisashi stepped outside and closed the door which is Yuku smirked, what, 
You're still ashamed of my existences. Also did you have kids because I would love to meet my half-siblings? Hisa she asked, Why are you here? Izuku said, To do something I always wanted to do. Hisa she asked, What is that? Izuku said, To have a, talk with you. Father to son conversion. Hisa she said, Okay, let me just tell my wife that I'll be out for a while. Izuku nodded. Hisashi opened the door to tell his wife and went back outside to say, Okay, let's talk. Izuku knocked him out with his bat, then texted Kuragi Ri to get him and dad to his warehouse, which Izuku said, This is just too easy. Two hours later at the warehouse Hisashi awoke, up to find himself strapped to a chair, which Izuku on a chair across from him said, You're finally awake. Good. Hisashi asked, What is the meaning of this? Izuku laughed, like I'm going to talk to a dead bean like you, I'm just going to do something I always wanted to do. Hisashi said, look Izuku, I'm sorry that I left you and didn't go. Izuku said, you realize that a simple sorry can't fix this and coming back will piss off mom more than anything. I left mom to protect and lift her from my burden, while you. Izuku grabbed a hammer. You left for the most stupid reason I have heard in my life. Izuku hammered Hisashi's wrist until it fractured, Hisashi cried in pain, which Izuku said, Bitch please, take it like a man. Izuku then got out a generator at jumper cables which Izuku, asked, Do you know the voltage that can kill a human? Hisashi in pain, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Izuku got the jumper cables and jabbed them in Hisashi's gut. After a few seconds Izuku pulled them away to say, what did I just say about forgiveness? Hisashi was crying in pain while Izuku increased the voltage on the generator, which Izuku chuckled. Now answer the question, how many volts does it take to kill the average human? Hisashi said, 150 Izuku jabbed the jumper cables on him, wrong Izuku increased the voltage and Hisashi said, 100 Izuku jabbed the cables again to say, First you were high now you're low. Izuku increased the voltage and Hisashi said, 120 Izuku dropped the cables and said, correct Izuku then pulled out a strange device which Hisashi asked, what is that? Izuku said, I forgot what it's really called, but I call it the nutbuster. Hisashi shocked, what? Izuku said, okay you have a choice, I can chop one of your fingers off or use the nutbuster on you. Hisashi said, finger. Izuku laughed, of course you would but I have a better idea. Izuku pulled out a syringe full of quirk erasing drug which he injected into Hisashi and, said, congrats, you are now quirkless like me. Hisashi was his absolute shock which Izuku untied him to say, come fight me, come kill the nut you busted that busted you. Hisashi got up and said, I'm not fighting you, Izuku. Izuku smiled, too bad. Izuku punched him in the face, then got on top of him to punch him in the face repeatedly. After a while Izuku got up to wash his hands that went, to Hisashi to say, well this is part 1. He got his phone out and called Sensei, yeah, can you turn him into a Namu for me? Sensei on the other end laughed and agreed to do it, which Hisashi was warped to Sensei to become Izuku's Namu. Izuku looked at his phone to said, okay. It's time to hang with Dobby. The alleys of Kamino as Yuka walked around to find Dobby then smelled the smell of burning flesh, which is Yuka knew he was nearby. Is Yuka found Dobby to say, Hey Dobby, you lovable flaming psychopath. Dobby looked at him and smiled, Hey is Yuku, you ready to cause a mess? Is Yuku asked, Let's grab lunch first, I'm starving. Dobby laughed. Then the two headed to a cafe that just opened. Izuku and Dobby went in, Izuku asked the waitress, Hello ma'am, but what is this place? The waitress, said, This cafe serves food and coffee like your normal cafe except we seat you with strangers to help people meet new people and make new friends. Dobby shrugged and Izuku said, I like the idea, I'm hungry and I can't wait to see who we meet. The two were seated with two people with menus covering their faces across them, which as they seated Izuku said, hello there. The two people put the menus down to reveal two people who that Izuku didn't want to see. 
The first one was Sarnitai and the other one was Mirio, which the three looked at each other while Dobby was laughing his ass off by the events. Is you could deadpan expression, oh, it's you too. Mirio saw Sarnitai who was in anger because the last conversion between him and Izuku was bad, like Izuku almost killed Sarnitai, Sir Comney said, well if it isn't the trash that should have been taken out last week. Izuku calmly said, right back at you, Sir Fuckface. The cafe could feel the intense aura in the air from these two being near each other, Dobby and Mirio ordered for the two. While Izuku and Sir were staring each other down. Mirio and Dobby made a truce to prevent these two from killing each other. Sir glared. How is it going being overhauls and all for one's lap dog? Is Yuku smirked, not regrettable like your all might tattoo on your ass. Dobby and Mirio both choked on their drinks from Is Yuku's comment, which Sir said, you should be thrown in Tartarus. Is Yuku said, you should be less of a dick and actually try being nice for once, it's works wonders for me. Their food was served which the two were, quiet, which Dobby and Mirio were glad that the two stopped talking for food. Then the waitress brought the check which Izuku and Sir both put their hands on the check at the same time. Izuku said, Sir Night I. Let go of the check. Sir glared at Izuku to say, I think for both of our sakes, I will pay the check. Izuku smirked, like you give a shit about my sake and all my successor over. There has no idea who he is up against. So, for both of our sake I will pay the check. Sir said, you are nothing more than a ten year throwing a fit because All Might said the truth. Is Yuku said, All Might was formerly quirkless himself, he abandoned his quirkless roots to play hero, now that is the biggest ten year old thing in this world. The two got up to attack each other, which Dobby quickly grabbed as Yuku and Mirio grabbed Sir. Is Yuku said, Dobby, let me kick his ass? Sir said, Mirio, let me go. I need to teach this kid some manners. Dobby and Mirio said at the same, we will pay the check. So Dobby and Mirio paid the check and for damages Yuku and Sir caused, which as Dobby and his Yuku left Sir yelled, I can't wait for you to go to jail. Is Yuku yelled back. I can't wait to see you in hell. Dobby got Izuku a block away from the cafe and gave Izuku some ice cream to calm him down. Dobby asked, better? Izuku said, better. Dobby said, okay, we still doing the thing. Izuku said, hell yeah, I need something to forget about that bastard who is always on his goddamn high horse. Dobby and Izuku were now walking the street to find Endeavor walking which Izuku said, Dobby, what am I on because that flaming trashkin is walking? Dobby fell to the ground in laughter by Izuku's comment, I'm weak. Izuku asked, you okay, Dobby? Dobby said, I'm hurting because it's funny, this why you're my best friend. Izuku said, Dobby, I thought we were best friends because we are honest with each other and trust each other. Also, it wasn't a joke, it's the truth. Dobby laughed, harder, stop you're going to kill me. Then Dobby calmed down and they headed to their favorite spot to spray paint art and wield shit. Izuku said, Dobby, I need your fire for the gold I stole. Dobby asked, what are you going to do with it? Izuku said, I'm making a giant dildo to send Sir Fuckface, so he can shove it up his ass with his ego and all might has tattoo. Dobby asked, wait, is the tattoo thing real? Izuku got out his phone and showed the picture to Dobby, which Dobby laughed his ass off to shout, no. I thought you were just insulting him. This has to be a dream. Izuku said, sadly for him, it isn't. Dobby got up to say, send that to me, I need to show Toga and a few others this. Izuku sent the pic to Dobby which after the two made the golden dildo and Izuku also put a note inside of the box. Then Izuku dropped the box off at his building, then they found Toga which Dobby showed the pic to Toga. Toga fell back laughing by it, which Spinner came along which he scared by the pic but found an amazing. Izuku then left Dobby and the other to head to Tamura to tell him that he was going to the USJ raid to support him. 
When Azuku finished with that he went to Kai's place, to pick up Gon and check out the new process of the drug and refill his drug storage. Izuku hugged Iray then headed off to apartment until he bumped into a man which Izuku said, I'm so. The person he bumped into was All Might, who was with David, which Izuku said, Gon get on my back. We are going to take an alternate route home. All Might went to his buff form to said, Young Madriya, come, with me. Izuku smirked, sorry. Did you say run away from you? Sure thing. Izuku started running from All Might, which All Might appeared in front of him which he said, Give up young Madriya. You can't escape from me. Izuku said, Without hurting you that is. Izuku jabbed All Might in his weak spot with a taser then taste All Might. Izuku then howled ass from him and went down the alley to drop a smoke grenade to then climb the building to jump rooftop to rooftop to the apartment. Izuku and Gon got in which Izuku asked. What is with my luck today? Izuku and Gon went to the room to then call it a day Gon asked why do you hate All Might? Izuku said, it's a sad story if you want to know before I tell you. Izuku told Gon, his story and All Might telling him he couldn't become a hero, which Gon said, that is sad. Izuku said, yeah, but how was your day before that mess? Gon said, it was amazing, Kai was nice just like you said. Izuku said, Good, I'm going to take you to a man who has a quirk just like yours and he will train you on how to use it. Gon asked, just like mine? Izuku smiled, just like yours, he, had it for years and he will help you with it and how to use it to its fullest. Chapter 4, Show and Tell Mom For most people Monday was a complete bitch because they are hung over from the weekend but if you were a police officer from Hazu, Kamino, and surrounding areas, you know it's Monday when Izuku gets arrested. Izuku gets arrested every Monday then by a bullshit miracle he escapes and destroys most of the police station. Cementos works overtime on Monday because of this which All Might and Eraserhead are forced by a new law called Izuku Midraya Law specifically to watch Izuku, and others like him, while he is in the interrogation room and when sending him to his jail cell. Izuku laughed that the Japanese government made the law just for him because he made this a Monday, thing. Izuku turns himself in on purpose just to escape to absolutely destroy the reputation of the law, the police, and heroes. Izuku was now sitting in the interrogation room completely chained up like Hannibal Lecter which two men walked in. Izuku said, Hello sir sat in lie detector. Namas aside because he is tired of Izuku's shit, hello again. Izuku Madraya. Izuku asked, What is, he doing here? Sir Knight I said, I'm here to apologize for what I said yesterday and the times before that. I saw that could be a hero if you're on the right path which me and All Might were wrong about it because you were quirkless. Izuku in shock, bring me my phone, I want to record this. Namasa said, Sorry, I'm not doing that. Izuku pouted. I guess I'm not saying a word and I will, escape like I normally do. Sir Knight I got Izuku's phone out and Izuku told him the password which Sir apologized with the recorder on, which Izuku decided to bury the hatchet. For now. Namasa felt the tension die down a little bit which they began the interrogation, which Izuku's mom, All Might, and Eraserhead were behind the glass. Ms. Madraya was shocked to see her son because she hasn't seen him since he ran away and she was tearing up. Namasa asked, okay first question, where's all for one? Izuku said, sorry can't answer that one. Sir asked, why? Izuku said, I get warped to his location, I never actually walked or was told where it sat. Namasa heard, truth he continued, what is overhaul planning? Izuku said, erase quirks and control the quirk market like he said, three weeks ago. Nothing more, nothing less. Namasa heard, truth Namasa asked, you were the last person to see Hisashi Madraya, your father. Where is he at? Izuku chuckled, he is coming. The two looked at him, sir asked, what do you mean? Izuku asked, is mom on the other side of the glass? Namasa nodded. Then a warp portal opened revealing a big dark green Namu coming out which, Izuku said, speak of the devil, dad get me out of these restraints. 
the Namu God as you out of his restraints which Namasa and Sir were shocked that as you could do this to his own father, All Might and Eraserhead were in disguise by this and tried to get to the other side. Izuku said, okay, dad kill everyone here except me and the short green haired woman on the other of the mirror. All Might, came in which the Namu attacked him and started wreaking havoc, which Izuku went up to his mom to say, come on mom, I will answer your questions when we get to my place. Miss Madriya took Izuku's hand and they were warped by all for one to Izuku's place, which Izuku said, Gon, I'm back. Gon appeared and asked, who is that? Izuku said, this is my mom and since you're my little brother, you, can call her mom if you want or just Miss Madriya if you want. Gon nodded and Izuku got his mom seated with T next to them, then Izuku asked, are you comfortable? Miss Madriya asked. What have you been doing? Izuku leaned back to say, You want the long answer or the short answer? Izuku looked at his mom and said, The short answer is that I'm a member of the Izuka, a member of the League of Villains, illegal arms dealer, slave valuer, info broker, and I guess a part time vigilante. Ms. Madriya looked at her son in shock, What is a slave valuer? Izuku said, I look at slaves and their quirks to determine how much money they are worth. Ms. Madriya slapped her son, I did not raise you to be involved in the slave trade. Gon said, but if he wasn't, he wouldn't have, saved me. Ms. Madriya looked at Gon and to Izuku, is that true? Izuku said, yeah, I have saved many slaves and returned them to their families but Gon here has no family, so I took him in. Ms. Madriya said. I'm sorry Izuku. Izuku got an ice pack, no, I deserve that one. Ms. Madriya asked, so you work for Overhaul and who is this all for one? Izuku said, All Might's arch enemy. Who is like a father to me. He is a really nice guy when you actually get to know him. We play chess, do quirk analysis, and talk politics every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Gon said, speaking of which, you have a meeting with him in 10 minutes. Miss Madriya said, I want to meet him. Is Yuku in shock? What? Miss Madriya said, I want to see if he really is a nice guy like you say he is. Is Yuku shrugged because he knew he wasn't going to win this agreement? She asked, You called that monster dad, is that really? Is Yuku said, Yeah, after I beat up dad, I got all for one to turn him into a Namu. Miss Madriya in shock. What? Izuku said, you should have seen him, he remarried and had two kids. What's worse the boy is named Izuku, which means there are two Izuku Midriyos in, Japan from the same dad. He actually replaced me, mom. Ms. Midriya was in shock and rage which Izuku said, but I didn't hurt them. I just want father to suffer for what he did to us. I'm sorry I have turned into a monster I am today. Ms. Madriya hugged her son, I still love you, I heard from All Might about saving people which I was happy about it but I'm still angry he told you that you, couldn't be a hero. Izuku said, wait, All Might came to talk to you? That bastard, I'm going to break both of his legs and maybe an arm as well. Izuku cried a little bit with his mom and after a while Kuragiri's warp gate opened which he, his mom, and Gon went in. Izuku said, I love Mondays, Sensei. Sensei chuckled, you never run out of ideas do you, Izuku. Keep it up because Tamura is, learning from you and is improving and finding ways to improve strategies. Ms. Madriya was afraid but seeing all for one and Izuku talking to each other, it calmed her down. Sensei asked, are you Izuku's mom? Ms. Madriya said, yes sir. Sensei said, you have truly raised a wonderful son, he made what people think is a weakness into an advantage which you should be proud that your son is, well respected by many even me. Izuku chuckled, Sensei, you're so kind. Miss Madriya saw Izuku's smile and saw it pure happiness which she haven't seen it in a long time, I am glad he is happy, I haven't seen him this happy in a long time. I'm glad you helped make it. Sensei turned to Gon to ask, are you Gon? Gon said, yes sir. Sensei showed his force activation quirk which Gon was in awe and, Sensei said, I heard you have this quirk as well, 
I will train you on how to use it gone show what he could do with it, which is Yuku continued to answer his mom's questions, which after a while is Yuku said, I think it's time we head out to check my goddaughter. Ms. Madraya was shocked about the statement, Sensei said, well it was nice to meet you Ms. Madraya. Is Yuku have a nice day and you, are still going with Tamura on his debut? Is Yuku said, I can't wait for it, dad. Ms. Madraya was even more shocked that her son called this man his dad, which is Yuku, his mom, and Gon were warped to Kai's place. Kai's hideout is Yuku helped his mom stand straight, yeah, it takes a while to get used to warping. Hari saw them and asked, hey is Yuku what you up to today? Is Yuku smiled, this is the, first time I met my mother in about a year, so I'm catching up with her. Here it came out to hug is Yuku, uncle is Yuku. Is Yuku picked her up, wow, you are getting bigger each day. You are going to be taller than me soon. Yuri giggled then she saw is Yuku's mom which is Yuku said, this is my mom. Ms. Madraya looked at the child to see that she was incredibly cute and Yuri said, grandma. Ms. Madraya, fell over, which is Yuku said, don't die on me, mom. Ms. Madraya got up to say, sorry, I wasn't expecting to be called that until much later in my life. Kai came out to say, is Yuku, we need your help with something. Is Yuku said, coming. Is Yuku left his mom, gone, and Iri with Hari because is Yuku trust Hari to do that. Ms. Madraya asked, what are they doing? Hari said, most likely Kai wants. Is Yuku to analysis some quirks on some heroes we will attack soon or quirks for our attack on one our rival Yazuka. Ms. Madraya was seen as Yuku was important and everyone actually respects him despite being quirkless like all for one said. After a few minutes, Is Yuku came out to say, okay so we are heading off to my apartment. I can't wait to for the fight in a few days with the leak. Hari said, have fun, if it goes well Kai will work with the leak. Is Yuku said, it will go well, I promise but if we fail to kill All Might. We damaged his reputation and take care now Hari. Before they left. Hari said, overhaul found another fight ring you two can go to. Is Yuku said, I can't wait, I have been itching for a fight. Miss Madraya looked at her son and saw that he was, definitely different from she remembered. Is Yuku's apartment is Yuku, gone and Ms. Madraya were warped in his apartment which Ms. Madraya actually looked around and it was much nice than she had. Is Yuku said, we will move you here tomorrow, because I need my one hour break. Ms. Midoriya said, well I didn't expect you work for people who are nice to be honest. Is Yuku said, most don't think so, either, but sometimes kindness and brains gets you really far. The door knocked and as Yuku went to get it, he opened it to reveal Melissa. Is Yuku said, how did you find me? Melissa said, I put a tracking device on you the last time we met. Is Yuku nodded, smart. Are you going to turn me in? Melissa said, no. I just want to get to know you. Is Yuku said, okay, but can we do this later like, maybe a date? Melissa blushed, as sure as Yuku said, okay, tomorrow around date. Melissa nodded, I will see you then. She left and as Yuku closed the door, he turned around to see his mom. Miss Madraya said, my son is going on a date with such a beautiful girl. Is Yuku turned red, mom, please. Chapter 5, Panic at the USJ. Panic at the USJ. Is Yuku's mom now lives with her son, because as Yuku has a, much nicer place and as Yuku insisted. Is Yuku will head on with the league to the USJ to fuck some shit up. He will also go a date with Melissa, and he will meet second girl. Will he get the chance to break All Might's legs like he wants to for the last few chapter? Let's find out. Is Yuko got up from his bed to begin the day by moving stuff from his mom's place to his apartment. Is Yuku gave his mom his, king size bed in his old room in the apartment and put a queen size bed in his weapon room to make the room his new bedroom. Is Yuku finished moving his mom in and quickly put all his weapons in his warehouses, he gave Gon some homework to do while he was gone. His mother looked at Gon's homework to help him but looked at it in shock. Ms. Madraya asked, Is Yuku, 
What is this? Izuku said, I'm teaching him Latin, accounting, economics, politics, philosophy, and English. Ms. Madraya looked at her son, does that look like something a six-year-old should learn? Izuku kissed his mom on the forehead, he can do it, I believe in him. She looked at Gon who already wrote a paragraph to answer a question that asks the answer to be written in Latin and finished a few accounting questions. She was in amazement by Gon's knowledge in the field and did try to help out the subjects she did know, which Izuku got warped to the leaves hideout. Izuku asked, Tamora, you ready? Tamora was in his outfit which he wore his t-shirt, pants, and a trench coat with hands on his face, shoulders, and arms, which he smiled, yes I am, I'm glad you came. Izuku nodded which Tamora got up on a table to, give his speech to the grunts they hired, today our main goal is to kill All Might with this. Tamora gestured to the Namu, this Namu was built to kill All Might, but I would like to assure you all that even if by some miracle it fails, we still won at the end of the day. The grunts looked at Tamura in confusion which he continued, we are going to get in undetected without triggering the alarms and if you all injure any students then All Might and UA failed to protect and keep their brats safe. We will be written in the history books as the ones who tore down this stupid and failure of a system hero society. We will bring rise to a new system that will benefit us. As soon as we enter the USJ, we have already won. The grunts saw the picture and cheered, Izuku saw how inspiring, Tamora was and he felt inspired by the speech. Afo heard Tamora's speech and felt nothing but pride for him, he knew he was going to walk the earth as one of the greatest villains to exist. Tamora got down from the table to ask, how did I do? Kuragiri said, that was amazing Tamora. Izuku nodded putting on sunglasses and a bandana covering his mouth, you have talent for public speaking, you, should use it more. Kuragi reopened a portal and the three went in first to greet the students first. USJ the three came out of the portal to see the students, 13, and erase her head, which Tamora said, I don't see all might, well I guess we will have to draw him out. Izuku said, I'm glad you are taking this so well. Remember the Namu is for All Might. Kuragiri will handle 13 over, there and I will handle a racer head. Izuku revealed his new razor a wire covered baseball bat which he learned that it could cut a racer head's scarf up if it touches his bat. Kuragiri started warping students except a few of them, eraser head saw grunts coming out of the portal and started running into them but Izuku jumped in front of him. Izuku asked, now, now eraser head. Where do you think you are, going to? Eraserhead activated his quirk which is you could piss off, I'm deeply offended that you assume I have a quirk, better yet that I need one to kick your ass. Eraserhead looked at him in confusion, what? Izuku took off his sunglasses and bandana to say, you know I'm quirkless, like lack of quirk. I respected you because we both fight quirkless, but now you are pissing me off. Eraserhead, groaned. Izuku Madraya, why are you here? Izuku said, because Aizawa, I am here to support the new League of Villains and take care of you. Aizawa smirked, what makes you think you can beat me? Izuku chuckled, I haven't shown you all my tricks. Then Aizawa asked, what trick haven't you sh? Izuku shot Aizawa in the dick with a rubber bullet. Which he said, don't worry they are just, rubber bullets. Izuku continued to shoot Aizawa in the dick and other parts of his body until he ran out of bullets in the clip, then went up to Aizawa to knock him out with his nightstick he also carried around with him. Izuku turned to Tamora to say, Eraser head is knocked out. Tamora smiled, there are some problems at the mountain zone, can you check on that? Izuku walked to the portal. Sure thing, it wouldn't hurt to check it out. Mountain zone Momo, Kyoka and Denki were just about to relax from defeating all the villains until a big villain with an electric quirk grabbed Denki's neck to say, I would surrender if I was you too. The two had no choice but to drop their weapons with the grunt was about to do something dirty to the girls until a whack to the back of his head, he fell down and Denki who was still in his stupid stage was free. The girls saw that Izuku was the one who knocked out the grunt. Izuku said, Herku, 
You bastard I thought you learned to stop harassing women. Jesus Christ, I going to reteach you a lesson about how to treat lady. Kyoka backed up and fell off the cliff, Momo yelled, Kyoka. Izuku ran off the cliff and dived to catch her and used, his grappling hook to help them land safely. Which he put her down to say, sorry about that miss, but you don't have to thank me. Izuku walked off which Kyoka asked, what is your name? Izuku looked at her, Izuku Midraya also known as the anarchist. I hope you are one of the few students here who don't get injured because I will beat the shit out of the guy who hurt a beautiful girl like, you. She blushed which then a portal opened up and Izuku said, I got to go, Tom Mora is waiting on me. Izuku left, leaving her to red and embarrassed but she was falling in love with Izuku and she didn't know it yet. Central Plaza Izuku appeared next to Tamura, the brats survived but one of them is injured, but we are doing gri. Suddenly a loud Diku was heard, Izuku groaned as he saw, Bakugo flying at him which he said, give me a moment that one is mine. Izuku ran at Bakugo and Bakugo flew at him, when they were a foot away from each other Izuku pulled out a flashlight to blind Bakugo. Izuku quickly moved out of the way for Bakugo to crash land, which Izuku used his taser baton to hit his back as he got up. Izuku said, Kaken. It's been forever. Izuku smashed one of, Bakugo's hands then said, How are you? Izuku went to the other hand and did the same to officially break both his hands which he continued. Hands? Oh, they are still broken. I thought you would get that fixed. I guess you're too stubborn to get help from a doctor. Bakugo, in pain, I'm going to kill you Diku. Izuku jabbed Bakugo in the ribs to taste him, a hero doesn't threaten a villain, with death, you know that. But I'm just going to kick your ass and this time, you won't be able to become a hero afterwards. Bakugo felt the venom on the hero part, which Izuku continued to beat the shit out of Bakugo and started breaking a few bones then out of instinct jumped backwards. A wall of ice appeared separating him from Bakugo which Totoraki came to save Bakugo, Izuku said, well if, it isn't daddy issues. Totoraki tiled his head, what? Izuku said, oh, I know about Endeavor's abuse, trust me. I learned it from your big brother Toya, now I'm going to beat up my former lifelong bully. Totoraki summoned another wall of ice to catch him but Izuku threw a grenade at it and ran for cover. Totoraki asked, Toy is alive? Izuku smirked, and is doing well. Now I'll give you a deal, I tell you where you could possibility find him in exchange I get a few more hits on Bakugo here. Totoraki said, no deal. Izuku said, too bad. The Namu came out of nowhere to punch Totoraki in the gut sending him flying to the doors of the USJ, which is Yuku said, thanks Tamora. Tamora responded, no problem is Yuku. Is Yuku saw Bakugo starting to move, where was I? Oh, yeah, is Yuku started dissing and whacking Bakugo until All Might broke down the doors to say, have no fear. Because I am here. Is Yuku said, oh. Johnny Bravo has arrived. Well time to finish Kaken here. Izuku shot Bakugo in the back which All Might quickly grabbed Bakugo and erase her head to put them to the side, which he was too late to get Bakugo from the bullet. Izuku said, don't worry he will live. But unable to walk or use his quirk. All Might looked at Izuku in rage, what do you mean? Izuku smirked, I erased my lifelong bully's quirk that he would torture me with. Now tell me can a monster like him who is now quirkless still be a hero? Can a quirkless nobody like me become a hero? All might and shame, you no longer have hope of being a hero, because I have failed you. But I will not, fail young Rikugo. Izuku laughed his ass off, which All Might went to grab Izuku but the Namu tackled All Might and the two began their fight. Izuku walked to Tamora's right side while Kiragi Ri was on Tamora's left side, which he said, let's support the Namu in every way we possibly can. Tamora said, that was I was thinking the same thing. The three watched as the Namu and All Might which he, was going to suplex the Namu until Kiragi Ri opened a portal to make the Namu grab All Might by his size which Izuku said, hold him still. 
So All Might and the Namu were locked in a stalemate and couldn't move until as Yuku pulled out the razor a wire bat which Tamura asked, What did you do with you bat? Izu said, This is a different bat, I have been saving this one for a while. The two went up, to All Might which as Yuku started hit All Might's right leg with the bat to break his leg. The wire cut up All Might's leg to reveal the bone as it broke which All Might screamed in pain then as Yuku pulled out a bottle of vodka for him and Tamura to drink then as Yuku poured the entire bottle on All Might's leg. Which the students were in shock by the events which Tamura grabbed All Might's weak spot to, say, my turn. As All Might was in greater pain, all of a sudden Tamura got shot in the shoulder which is Yuku looked to see the U8 teachers which Tamura ordered the Namu to let go of All Might. The three got the Namu in and looked at the heroes which Tamura said, this isn't the last you see of us again. Is Yuku yelled, that's right because we will always be watching you. Then the three got in, the portal to get back to the bar which Ifo asked, how did it go? Tamura said, we didn't kill him but we heavily injured All Might and the others. The Namu is returned safely back into the lab so we can use it again. Izuku said, he will be extremely weak when he gets out of the hospital. An hour later the news appeared which showed the USJ which showed the pictures of the villains, responsible for it. The pictures of Izuku, Tamura, and Kuragiri which Izuku got a phone call. Izuku picked up, hello Gon, what's happening? His mom was on the other side, which he kinda forgot she is starting to live with him, she questioned what he did over at the USJ. He explained that he made Bakugo unable to walk and made him quirkless and broke All Might's leg which she was angry but let, it go after a while. Which he told her that he was fine and unharmed which he was at the league's base at the moment. Then he put the phone away to check the time and said, I guess I got to get ready for my date tonight. Tamura and Kuragiri looked at him in shock which he said, What? You two know I have a life besides the League and the Yakuza. Which Kuragiri asked, Who is the lucky lady, is Yuku said, Just someone I met a few days ago. Well, have fun recruiting more people and I will get Dobby and his friends to join you. Kuragiri warped his Yuku to his apartment so he can get changed and check Gon's homework quickly. His mom was still shocked that Izuku was teaching on such high level knowledge which Izuku response was, Trust me, these subjects really help me in this line of work, Izuku wore a black tuxedo with a green dress shirt and a white tie, he walked out of his apartment to find Melissa in her dress, same as the movie. Izuku said, You look stunning. Melissa blushed, You think so? Izuku said, No, I know you are. Izuku then got the limo to pick them up which Melissa said, this is nice. Izuku said, if this is nice, wait until you see where we are going to. They, arrived at a place called Tapas Molecular Bar, which Melissa was impressed by the place. They got their food and she enjoyed it and had some fun, but Melissa saw the bill which Izuku chuckled and paid it and left a tip of 11,086 yen, a little more than $100. Izuku said, Let's have some fun and I have money to burn. They rode around to little shops and tech shops as well which is you could did have a really good fake driver's license and bought a brand new Tesla. Which he was driving around with her in it which he said, so this is what it feels like to drive in style. The two were having a blast which then he drove to her place which she said, I had a great time. Is you could said, hey, I sorry about the whole breaking your uncle Mike's leg thing. But I like you so I guess he will probably get, an apology card from me. Melissa in shock, really? Izuku said, unless you don't me to. Melissa said, I like you too, but I think you should get on my dad's good side a little and send Uncle Might an apology card. Izuku smirked, okay, it will be done my lady. Melissa left and he opened the door for her and walked her to apartment which David opened the door to find the two. Izuku said, don't worry, I brought her back safely and unharmed, she had fun and I going to leave now. David was about to say something but Mirio ran out of nowhere and Izuku got in his new car and Tokyo drifted his way from Mirio. Mirio got on the windshield which Izuku yelled, don't dirty up the windshield. I just bought this thing like an hour ago. 
Mirio was about to phase through the windshield, until Izuku stepped on the brake to send Mirio flying off the car and Izuku put the car in reverse. Izuku drove off and called Kuragiri to warp him and his new car to his warehouses. Which a portal appeared in front of him and he put his new car in one of them and covered it because it's a new Telsa and he doesn't want to get it dirty. Izuku came home and told his mom how the date went and, everything, which Gon said, I got your bills and bank account information letters. Izuku grabbed them and started doing them. His mom wanted to help but was amazed by her son is able to do his bills with ease. After a few minutes, Izuku muttered, so let's see after tonight's date, bills paid for, and a few other expenses I should have 44,661,600,000 yen, $400 million give or take. His mom, dropped her teacup which she asked, how much do you have? Izuku told her the amount he had which she said, you realize what you can do with the money? Izuku said, buy a house, retirement plan, and other stuff, but I'm not ready for that yet. Ms. Madraya looked at him which he said, I guess I can get a bigger apartment but not a house. They settled on the idea which she asked, where did, you get the money? Izuku said, my villain activities beside overhaul and the league are robbing banks, arms dealing, sell illegal stuff, quirk analysis, and other stuff. Which no one besides me, you, and Gon know how much money I have, so tell no one. She nodded and he went to bed to prepare for a week of craziness he was going to do and he was going to have a blast. Chapter 6, Izuku and Dobby The, Adventures of Dobby and Izuku PT. One warning, this is a chapter that contains Izuku and Dobby doing some crazy shit and may result in the injury of others around them. Thank you for reading this warning. It's been two weeks since the USJ, which Kai and Tamor have been doing some talks which resulted in a partnership between the two organizations. Izuku was now driving around town in his Tesla at high, speed with Dobby as his passenger. Izuku said, I love this car, it's fast and has style. Best Buy, 10 out of 10. Dobby turned on the radio which broadcasted the eSports festival, they listened to it while Izuku ran through some red lights. Izuku said, I wish I was able to get in but since I was at the USJ, I can't go visit events. Dobby smirked, I have an idea, can you call Kuragiri? Izuku, used the car's phone system to call Kuragiri which Kuragiri said, Hello Dobby asked, Hey Kuragiri. Is it possible to warp us from our location to the eSports festival? Izuku looked at Dobby which Kuragiri said, yeah. Dobby said, do it. Dobby hung up the phone before Izuku could respond, which then a portal opened up in front of them. Izuku said, I hope to God, this car doesn't get, destroyed. They went through the portal to go give you a hell with their sweet ride. UA Sports Festival everyone was enjoying the event so far, except Bakugo who was angry but he is able to walk again because Izuku missed the spot to actually take away his walking, but he was lucky. Bakugo was in fact quirkless now which pissed him off the most, that his quirk was erased by Izuku, the useless, quirkless kid he bullied. He had to explain what he did to Izuku when they were younger which everyone was not happy about. But they gave him a second chance to make up for it by being the first quirkless hero. As much as Bakugo hated his situation, he still wanted to be a hero and he was not letting this handicap stop him. Aizawa couldn't walk for now because Ichu took a few rubber bullets to the dick then yeah you are not supposed to move. Yagi was still in the hospital which everyone was still angry with his Yuku and the league about that, which when Yagi got an apology card from his Yuku. He didn't know what to think. Izuku hated him but he was questioning on why Izuku was apologizing to him about his injury, which he was going to investigate that, Nezu had to work overtime to take care of interviews and paperwork about the USJ, like the injures of the students, teachers, and property damage. Everyone was relaxed and enjoying the festival until they saw a portal open and saw a black Tesla fly out of it making donuts on the fighting ring which had Kyoka and Mina on it. The windows of the car rolled down revealing Dobby and Izuka which they, started raising their middle fingers in the air like that they just don't care, 
Wait was that a rhyme? Is Yuku flew out of the ring to tear up the grass which Dobby started setting the grass on fire which people could hear Dobby yelling, keep it steady, I want this done right. Is Yuku shouted, hurry, this grass is getting my car dirty. Dobby yelled, you have money to clean this car, better yet you, can replace this car with another one. The two drove around the ring to make some words and they stopped which Dobby yelled, hey Endeavor, this is a message to you. The camera got to an angle to see the words they wrote which read, Fuck you dad as Yuku looked at Kyoka to say, Nice to see you again, did you get hurt after I left? Kyoka blushed, No. Dobby looked at his Yuku and though about how, much trouble he was getting himself into which then Midnight and Endeavor appeared in front of the two. His Yuku said, Ok Dobby you get your dad and I get my favorite MILF. Dobby said, Stop. You are going to get hurt one day for saying that shit. Izuku pulled out his bullwhip and walked to Midnight. I haven't touched tips with you in a while. Midnight said, Era era, little Shota has been a bad boy for a while now. Izuku said, Whip so good that I will call you on San. Midnight said, You can call me whatever you want little Shota. Endeavor and Dobby were equally disturbed by their conversion, which Dobby said, Quit it Izuku. You are making this weirder than it needs to be. Izuku said, but I was getting warmed up. Fine I'll stop. Endeavor asked, who are you? Dobby smirked, I, guess you really can't recognize your own son. Well doesn't matter I just want to kick your ass. Endeavor in shock, Toyo? Dobby chuckled, then more heroes arrived which Izuku said, I'm sorry in advance, I believe in true gender equality. Izuku punched Midnight in the gut and howled ass into his car and Dobby threw a fireball at Endeavor to follow Izuku. They got in the car to drive around the field and the ring which Izuku called Kuragi Ri to get them the hell out of the stadium. They saw a portal and drove in it to appear in front of Izuku's warehouses which Dobby asked, where are we? Izuku said, these are my warehouses that I do stuff in and they are labeled as such. The first building had a sign reading. Rober Multiplicat which Dobby asked, what the hell does that say? Is Yuku, said, that is Latin for powerless which that is Kai's second factory which I oversee. Dobby looked at the other ones reading Arm Ignis, T. Dumb, Bibliotheca, Cybus, and they stopped at Sivus Seditious Asset T. Turbulentas which, Dobby asked, okay, what does that one say? Is Yuku said, that one means anarchist believe it or not. Dobby in shock. No. Those four words means anarchist, Izuku said, Google Translate if you don't believe me. Dobby used Google and Izuku was right that his simple villain name is a long ass name in Latin. Izuku put the car in the building which has his weapons and multiple villain outfits because Izuku likes to change it up every once in a while. Izuku looked at the car and sigh in relief, it's just dirty, I will get it washed tomorrow because I have something else to do tonight, want it come with? Dobby shrugged, I don't have anything better to do. Hazu Izuku and Dobby were walking the alley to find Stain and Ingenuim in a fight which Izuku yelled, Stain. Stain jumped back and grunted, anarchist. Izuku said, ok Stain, why are you attacking Ingenuim? He has been following your ideas of a true hero and yet here you are killing a true, hero. Stain said, he has been talking to you. Izuku said, so? He wants help capturing villains and I give him my quirk analysis. Is that wrong for people to ask, I mean you kill people and I don't so who is the bad guy here? I mean you are killing fake heroes but murder is still murder, while I haven't killed a single person yet. Stain grunted, why are you always right? Izuku gave Stain, some papers and said, these are the fakes you should kill. Now go get them. Stain jumped and quickly ran away which is Yuku looked at Ingenuim to say, he won't kill yet because he needs to find them in time to plan. I brought the quirk analysis you wanted. Ingenuim got them, I hate you, but I need your help with stuff like this, so what is the payment? Is Yuku chuckled, for saving your life, and getting you the information, I will say about favor for later in my life. The two walked off which Dobby said, that was need seen stain so close. Izuku said, 
He is an interesting man don't get me wrong. It's just to me. He is a weirdo. Dobby chuckled, so what is next? Is Yuku said, I got to go shopping for a gift for my girl. Dobby laughed, you got a girlfriend, but you still flirt with, other women. Is Yuku said, I would like to think of it as engaging in a lovely conversion. The two walked around until they saw a group of thugs surrounding a teen girl, which is Yuku said, damn that is how I met Melissa. Time to see who I meet this time. Dobby just sat back to watch the show because he knows as Yuku can take care of himself. As Yuku found the leader and beat the shit out of him, after the rest ran off he realized he saved Kyoka which he said, I saved you again. I guess I'm some sort of knight in shining armor. Well are you alright? Kyoka blushed, yes, I'm alright. As Yuku asked, how did you end up here? Kyoka explained her reason of meeting her friends at the mall nearby which as Yuku offered to walk her there. Which Dobby went along because he would be burning people, alive if his Yuku wasn't there and that gets boring after a while. The escort her to the mall which she thanked as Yuku and gave her number to him which Dobby said, look at this player here with two girls here. Is Yuku chuckled, Dobby, you are just jealous that I can afford such thing. The two went the place they would do their art which is Yuku pulled out a secret door which had their spray paint and various gold and other valuable metals. Dobby spray painted a picture of Endeavor sucking a black dick which is Yuku took a pic and sent it to the dark net. Then as Yuku said, I want to use fire to make a trophy for your dad, I will be trophy that reads number one worst dad, which it will be a penis, but it will have number one on it. Dobby smiled, I love it. The two got to work and after a while they dropped it off and headed to the alleys to find the Naro Auto Vigilantes, which as Yuku was prepared to help train them. They arrived to them which Knuckle Duster looked at as Yuku to asked, So, you broke All Might's leg as Yuku pulled out his blood covered razor wire bat, yep and this is proof. Knuckle Duster chuckled, Well you are proof that our kind shouldn't be messed with. Which as Yuku agreed on. That statement which Dobby sat down to watch how this was going to work out. Is Yuku gave Crawler a run for his money by his many tricks. Crawler said, why do you have so many weapons on you? Is Yuku said, I want to be ready for any situation that I face and if there is one thing, I learn from the underworld is that you must never fight fair. Heroes try to fight me fair, but I always have the advantage when it comes to fights. Is Yuku pulled out his gun and his quirky racing bullets, this right here is my trump card, the quirky racing bullets. Once I erase the quirks, I have full advantage because they don't fight quirkless and I do. Knuckle Duster agreed on Is Yuku's statement which Crawler was understanding the importance of dirty fighting in their fights which Is Yuku and Dobby left. Dobby said, they are an interesting group. Is Yuku said, I like them. Misfits trying to help their community and arrest the nearby villains that the heroes can get. That is courage right there. The two continued their way into the night which is Yuku invited Dobby to his new apartment which had an extra bedroom, which is Yuku gave that to Dobby for him to sleep in for the night. Miss Madriya learn about Dobby's story which she got upset that someone could do something that bad to their family. Dobby liked Miss Madriya because she reminded him of his mom before the thing with his little brother Shuto. After dinner and watched the news of his Yuku and Dobby causing a mess at the sports festival which ended with Midnight punched in the gut, Endeavor burnt on his arm, Kami Woods burnt as well, and few other heroes unable to catch the two. Everyone went to bed to call it today which is Yuku put Kyoka's number on his phone and said, this won't bite me in the ass later, I'm real sure. Chapter 7, Low Profile Low Profile or boy is out here grinding and he does whatever he wants but uh, has the government and heroes coming after him. What is his villain ranking at this point and what makes him, different from a chaotic evil? Let get down to business. Is Yuku just left the bank with Danjiro and Manami with a ton of cash and gold, enjoying an easy break in and escape. Kuragi re helped them with the transport, Danjiro being the star of the show. Manami being the camera girl and actress, and Izuku being a special guest to the show just stealing a lot of money with ease. 
Their internet show, exploded when Izuku came in the help by giving them jobs that will help boost popularity and his appearance help them get a lot of quirkless fans. Ever since the USG and the sports festival, the new updated villain list has Izuku as an S-class villain which makes him the first quirkless villain to get such a rank. Izuku was the first quirkless villain to get A-class rank and this was now another, trophy he can add to his wall. Izuku was now counting money and separating the pay because Izuku is a man of his word and believes in fair pay. He gave everyone a fair share of splitting the pay which Tanjiro and Manami got their half while Izuku and Kuragiri got their half. Everyone knew that Izuku is a man of his word unless his life was in serious danger and that he always pursued pleasure above all else. But sometimes it, not his pleasure he pursues. Sometimes he likes to see people find their pleasure and would help them. Izuku was not a selfish person, he likes to share and help out others. Izuku shook Danjiro's hand, pleasure doing business with you, I hope we continue to work with each other. Danjiro smiled, I hope so too. Izuku left to walk around in the alleys of Hazu to find Spinner which he's out, looking for stain, killing thugs, or stalking and killing fake heroes. Izuku at first didn't like or hate Spinner because he reminded Izuku of Stain which Izuku didn't like or hate Stain. To Izuku, Stain had a good ideology, but he was weird and creepy which Spinner was a little less creepy. To Stain, Izuku was the villain that had information to help him and Izuku was too nice to be a villain which, confused him the most. Stain never felt comfortable around Izuku because he was nice but could beat the shit out of a person with ease if he was angered. The two never really sat down and had a talk because their talks would be just trade talks whereas Yuku gave Stain information on fake heroes that his Yuku believed needed to be out of the picture because they agreed that the system was full of fake, heroes that needed to be taken care of. But the true differences were that his Yuku hated governments of all kinds because they would discriminate him and his kind no matter what and believed All Might was one of the fake heroes. Izuku found Spinner who just killed a fake hero which Izuku said, looks like someone is having fun. Spinner smirked, you do have your ways of finding people. Izuku, chuckled, well let head out to take care of some business. The two headed off to go do their personal business, the one thing they had in common was that the quirkless and mutant quirked people were looked down by everyone else. There is a hierarchy in this world people don't talk about, but everyone knows about the quirk hierarchy as it's commonly called. The top of the hierarchy is the emitters because they are still human but with the quirk and under them was the transformation quirks which made the users a mutant for a short time. The third is mutation quirks like spinner where they are mutated because of the quirk which they no longer look human but they are somewhat treated like human. Then there was the quirkless on the bottom which they are the most heavily discriminated, and seen as the inferior humans actually not even human because of the lack of a quirk. The two hated the hierarchy of this society and agree on teaching few people a lesson on how stupid it was. The two understood what it's like to be discriminated and loved inflict pain on others who tries to fight them and other things. Izuku and Spinner were now outside a restaurant that he had signs reading no mutants or quirkless which is yuku asked you ready spinner smirked when you are is yuku opened the door to throw a flash bang and closed it fast they heard the bang and opened it up to begin the beat down is yuku gave spinner one of his bats because it was more fun to break bones and make the enemy suffer than killing them they have been watching the place closely to figure out when the owner comes in and today was day they beat up the workers some of the customers, and the owner, but the owner was also tied up and stripped naked which is Yuku and Spinner put him on the roof of the place. Which the two ran off before the heroes and cops showed up which is Yuku asked, you think the owner got the message? Spinner said, I'm sure. The two definitely respected each other because of, skill, ideals, and hatred for society, which the two headed to the league's base. Izuku is going to have a meeting with Kai, Sensei, and Tomoro which makes four S-class ranked villains in one room to discuss their future plans. Izuku has been their bridge in working for both of them, he oversees Kai's second factory and Sensei's second Namu factory making him a powerful person. Izuku got warped, into the Sensei's room which everyone was there, Izuku said, 
Sensei, K, Tamura, it's always great to see you three. The three welcomed him which Sensei said, so here we are. The most powerful and influenced villains of today are now here to talk about the future of Japan. I would like to discuss our first objective. All Might and his successor. The three nodded then Sensei continued, I'm not strong as I used to be, I can only leave this place for three hours a day. Kai interrupted, if you don't mind, I would like to use my quirk to heal you back to full health. Sensei nodded which used his quirk to heal Sensei back to full health which Tamura with wide eyes said, Sensei. Izuku looked at Sensei to say, damn you must have been stealing girls hearts back in the day. Sensei, chuckled at Izuku's response then said, thank you Izuku and thank you overhaul for your healing. Then everyone got settled which Sensei said, I expect All Might and his allies to find us and destroy us. I want to keep a low profile for a while but to continue what we are doing, so as you we need you to tone it down on your activities for a little bit. Like maybe put your full attention on the, factories, money flow, and recruitment. Is you sighed, yes sensei, I understand. Kai said, don't worry is you it's only for a short time but we also need you to increase production on both factories and recruitment. We know you get bored and start getting in trouble so we send you challenges on how much production you should do. Izuku asked, challenges? Tamura said, I came up with the idea. If you were wondering. Izuku smiled, Tamura, you are getting smarter by the minute, it's almost scary. The three continued talks until they covered everything, which they are going to get a few more people to ally with them to make the league even more powerful. Izuku got warped to his warehouses to check the Namu Lab labeled T Dum in the Kai's second factory, then went to his personal warehouse to check his computer for the challenges that he is given. The first challenge is to recruit at least 300 recruits corked or quirkless, make about 5 shipping containers, the big metal ones, of the quirky racing bullets and drugs, and 20 Namus by the end of the week. Izuku chuckled, this is the first challenge. This is child's play to me. Three days later Izuku sent the emails to the three saying the first challenge is done, which the three responded. Sensei wrote, that was faster than expected, well I need 50 namas in one week. Kai wrote, excellent, I need triple that in one week. Tamura wrote, how? Well here's a challenge, 1000 recruits in one week. Izuku laughed, now that's a challenge. Izuku went to his grunts that work for him, Izuku hires the people who usually, never get jobs in this world which would be the quirkless and the mutant quirks people. He went check on them and told them the new goal but told them they can have the rest of the day off. Izuku's grunts like Izuku because he doesn't discriminate and he is providing jobs for them, also he was a nice boss who knows how to increase production without overworking them. Selling illegal arms is his business not Kai's or the League's, just his on the side business which he loves the money flow he was getting. The League gets money from what is Yuku, Grin, and Sensei gives, and Kai gets money from the quirky racing drugs, which is Yuku pays his grunts well because he wants to keep them working to keep his operation going. The grunts left and went to tell the other grunts that they also had the rest of the day off which is Yuku sat in his office calculating the sales and everything then finished to head home. Izuku came home to find Melissa, Kyoka, and his mom at the dinner table. He looked at them to say, I have so many questions, I don't know where to begin. The three got up to hug him and asked where he has been, which he explained the situation. His mom asked, so, you're not going, to go around cause trouble? Izuku said, I'll still be doing illegal stuff, but I wouldn't appear on the news for a while or be out on the streets either. Melissa asked, so where do you work at, so we can visit? Izuku said, I'll let Kuragiri allow you all to be warped there if you need something or visit. Kyoka asked, are you going to be gone for another few days? Izuku said, oh yeah, I'll be gone for another few days, but I will let you three know that I'm alright and what not. But Kyoka, I would like to know how you got here and why you and Melissa are so familiar with my mom. 
second day without his Yuku Miss Madraya was worried about her son because he hasn't showed up for two days. It reminded her of the time he ran away, she was about to go out to see where he went. The door knock she opened it up to see a blonde blue eyed girl at the door which she asked, can I help you? The girl asked, is his Yuku here? Miss Madraya looked at her, no, but I'm his mother, can I help you? The girl said, hello Miss Madraya, I'm Melissa. Miss Madraya realized who she was and teared up, my little is Yuku's girlfriend. Melissa came inside which the two talked about is Yuku when, he was little and Miss Madraya showed baby pictures, then they hear knocking on the door. Ms. Madraya opened the door to see a black-haired girl with earphone jack earlobes which she asked, Is Izuku here? Ms. Madraya cried out, My Izuku got two girlfriends. The girl got red said, No, it's not like that. I'm Kyoka, he saved me a couple times and I was coming to thank him, which then she came inside which they continued to discuss him, which the three calmed down after meeting each other and talking about Izuku which the three agreed that starting tomorrow they will start looking for him. The girls stayed for the night because as Yuku is right about the rapists at night are more active. The next day they looked at his last known locations and looked up phone numbers, in his Yuku's phone book, but Gon explained which numbers they must never call under any situation. It was evening which they were discussing what they found and what not until they saw a portal open and as Yuku came out present is Yuku signed, I'm sorry for worrying you three but sometimes I have a lot of work. They are keeping me occupied so I keep a low profile for a while. Which his mom made his, favorite dish which he was happy to see it, he then headed to the TV to see the news which had Bakugo being the first quirkless hero in training which is Yuku grunted, bastard Kyoka asked, what's your problem with Bakugo? Is Yuku told her, Melissa and his mom about everything that Bakugo did to him when he was little, which left the three in shock because Miss Madraya didn't believe what the teachers told her when Bakugo confessed what he did but with Izuku revealing it to be true. She was in full rage at Bakugo. Melissa and Kyoka were angry that someone like Bakugo who is getting praise and becoming a hero did that to someone which ended up making Izuku what he is today. The newsman then said, now for our latest poll. Who would win in a fight Bakugo, the quirkless hero or is Yuku, Midrayo also known as the anarchist? The poll is showing a split even tie. Is Yuku laughed his ass off. What a bunch of idiots I tell you, I wish I recorded Kakan getting his ass handed to by me when he had his quirk, and he is getting trained by Aizawa which I shot him in the dick with rubber bullets to win that fight with ease. How can he win in a fight with me? The three were calming him down which he did, and he said, I'm sorry about that. I guess I will go get some sleep. He got in the shower to get him cleaned off, then headed to his bedroom to find Kyoka and Melissa naked on his bed. He pulled his do not disturb sign on top of one of his shelves and said, good thing this room is soundproof. He put the sign on the doorknob and locked the door to have himself a good night. Chapter 8, Loophole. Our boy is toning down on his fun which how will the heroes react to this unusual disappearance of his? Did Izuku used protection and pulled out? Will Izuku find a loophole to continue his daily activities? Let's get to this. Izuku woke up to find his girlfriends in his bed which he smirked and thought to himself, it's a good thing I got condoms under the pillow for, things like this, but right now I'm not getting up. He got a phone call which he grabbed it to whisper, Hello? Kuragiri on the other line said, Your warp portal is ready. Izuku said, Give me about five minutes. Kuragiri said, Dobby wants to warp to your location to show you something. Izuku said, Give me five minutes to get ready. Izuku heard Dobby say on the other end, I'll help him up, and it will be quick. Before could say anything Kuragi reopened a portal to his room and Dobby came through to see Izuku with the girls in his bed. Dobby with wide eyes and his jaw on the floor in shock and Izuku whispered, leave. Dobby struggled to move which then Kuragi on the phone asked, is everything alright? Which the Kuragi went through and gasped at the sight which Izuku whispered, get the fuck out. Which the two were about to until Tamoran accidentally walked in and saw it. 
He was about to scream but Dobby tackled him back to the other side of the portal. Kuragiri whispered, We are very sorry. They left which is Yuku managed to get out of the bed and got dressed to get warped to the base to see what Dobby want to show him. Izuku left an apology letter for the girls that he, has to go back to work, Izuku walked into the portal which he said, next time I say, give me 5 minutes, give me 5 minutes. I haven't had breakfast yet. Izuku got a bowl of cereal and he ate while Dobby showed Izuku that the heroes are on the streets and were panicked that Izuku hasn't show himself in 4 days now. Izuku missed his usual Monday arrest which the police were on edge that. Izuku hasn't caused havoc in three days. Izuku chuckled, if this is four days, imagine four weeks without me. The police station the top ten pro heroes with almost fully healed all might wear with the police chiefs of the cities Izuku terrorizes, other officers, and the mayors of said cities. The chief of Hazu said, so we all know why we are here? All the heroes nodded which Nezu appeared, to turn on the TV screen to begin the presentation, Nezu said, Izuku Madraya, also known by most as the Anarchist, is an S-class villain who doesn't like governments of any kind and fights for quirkless and mutant rights movements. He is loved by the quirkless and has fans all across the world because he shows the world that the quirkless can be quirked heroes and villains with hard work. He is known for causing havoc, but he hasn't killed a single person in his entire villain career, he has injured many heroes and others. He is wanted for his many crimes, questioning of other supervillains, and to help the government with how to regain the minds of the quirkless. He has caused the quirkless population from committing suicide to causing crimes like him, which the government want him, to help convince the quirkless population to stop both suicides and crimes. Endeavor huffed at the last apart because he didn't care about the quirkless, which Nezu continued, he has been missing for four days now which means he or the people he works for or with plan something big. The heroes were on edge by the statement because Izuku has done a lot of things that were big but when the, realize it, they were an everyday thing to him, now he is going even bigger. One of the mayors said, that is why we need to find him to stop what he is planning before he reappears with what he reveals. The heroes nodded and they began their investigation in the disappearance on Izuku Madraya, which they were going to catch him this time. Or so they thought. Izuku's warehouse Izuku got back, from checking the progress of the latest challenge which Izuku was going to get it done one day earlier if his grunts continue the good work. He was getting bored from accounting and overseeing the progress, which he looked at his outfits. He had a villain outfit for everything, and every hero has seen most of them except one outfit. His first outfit he never wore, it was when he started working, for Kai, it was a black plague doctor outfit complete with the hat, red lens googles, and cane. He didn't wear it because it was a little too much and summer time was bitch if he wore it. He looked at it and thought to himself, what if I modified it? Izuku took the outfit to the table and started designing a brand new version of it to be bulletproof, element proof, and can handle all mites, Detroit smash. Then a portal opened, which Melissa came out which Izuku said, hey there. Melissa came up to kiss him which he said, love you too she said, I brought your lunch. She handed him his lunch and looked at his new suit design to asked, what is this for? Izuku said, I had an old suit that I wanted to modify when I want to use it again, but it's outdated. Melissa made her, design with amazed Izuku, she said, that is how I would modify it. Izuku asked, you do know you stuff, I almost forgot about your dad used to make support items and suits for all might. Then Izuku looked at it, I guess I will take it to the shop to get my guys to make it, you want to come? Melissa nodded which Izuku and her went to Saibus, Izuku said, the word means food, but really, it's a workshop for items and torture chambers for getting information out of people. Melissa asked, why did you call it food? Izuku said, well I can't call it workshop or torture chambers because I want to confuse people. Also, everyone here who works for me is either quirkless or has a mutant quirk just letting you know in advance. After showing her the workshop and the people who work, for him, he watched her and a few others work on his new outfit which after an hour the suit was now ready. 
It was a black futurist plague doctor suit with a steel gray mask with red lens. As you could put it on which the suit increased his strength and speed, the cane that came with acted like his taser but on, the suit was bulletproof and elemental proof, but most importantly it can take all mites, most powerful punch three times. As you could put it on to try it out, he felt the speed he gained and the strength which Izuku was enjoying it. He was now thinking about going out on the street to beat up some heroes and some thugs. Which he decided that no one will recognize him, so he brought Melissa back to his apartment and head out to kick some ass as the lone black kick ass. Izuku was still, working on the name but he wanted to kick some ass with this new suit which as he jumped from building to building thinking about how this reminds him of his first appearance. He saw some thugs robbing some couple which he thought, how cliche. He jumped due to knock out the leader then tased the others which he tipped his hat to the couple and ran off without a word. He then saw Mount Lady which he, thought, swiggity swoody I'm coming for the booty. He jumped down to hit her on the head then taste her to keep her down then drag her to the door of the nearby cat cafe then put her in the cat corner and cover her and cats. He took a picture then howled asked to continue his mayhem, he forgot to mention he wanted a voice changer for the suit but thought he might not say a thing to make himself a silent prankster, Izuku then had an idea for his name the silent trickster, he went to the police station to spray paint his new villain name on it. The heroes and police were shocked by how bold this new villain was which Izuku ran off throwing smoke bombs and flashbangs behind him. Izuku escaped and got back to his warehouse to check the progress reports of the production and hid the suit somewhere so Kaior, Sensei doesn't find it. Izuku then thought about getting Melissa to upgrade all of his suits when she has time because the new suit was amazing to him. He turned on his TV to see the news which they were talking about the silent trickster which Izuku got a call from Sensei. Izuku picked it up, hello, this is Izuku. Sensei said. Well you have found a loophole. Izuku said, I was testing out a, new suit, don't worry it wouldn't happen again. Sensei said, we're not mad, actually we will let you run around as the silent trickster but you must keep up production and not get caught. Izuku said, I can do that. Sensei ended the call which Izuku chuckled, well I'm going to abuse this loophole. The next day Izuku got Melissa to upgrade his current anarchist suit while he went out to do some trouble which Izuku had a genius idea when he reveals the silent trickster as the anarchist which started going to Tartarus to find weak spots and shifts while he was out causing problems. Izuku was jumping building to building until felt a punch but it did nothing to him which he turned to find Mirio which Izuku jabbed Mirio with the cane, but the cane went through. The two jumped back. Which Miru said, Trickster, your appearance may have been yesterday and you are already been classified as a B-ranked villain. Izuku thought, hold up. I'm now a B-rank in one day, now that escalated quicker than I thought. Mirio continued, what do you have to say for yourself? Izuku just shrugged then got into a fighting stance. Mirio asked, you have nothing to say. Izuku nodded at him. Which Mirio charged which Izuku started dodging attacks because Izuku was waiting for him to catch his breath. Mirio started using a fat 40% which hit Izuku but did nothing to Izuku. Izuku took the chance to taste him, Izuku started running until Mirio came back to use so fat 50% which Izuku turned around to take it which the punch wasn't going to harm him so Izuku tasted and peppered sprayed him, which Izuku howled as. Izuku was extremely happy about this suit's ability to take some damage and he could hardly feel it, then Mirio yelled, Bubble Girl get him. Izuku thought, yes. Mirio brought big blue titties to the battle. Bubble Girl got in front of him which she started to release some bubbles at him. But he shrugged and dropped kicked her and though, I'm wearing a gas mask, why, didn't you just use hand to hand combat? Izuku tipped his hat and continued to run which he heard, get him Mirko. Izuku thought, hold up. Why are they bringing the number 6 pro hero, remember she becomes number 5 after All Might retires, to catch a B-ranked villain. Mirko landed in front of him which he knew he was screwed so he dropped a flashbang between them. 
Mirko cover her ears and closed, her eyes which is Yuku had the outfit protect him from flashbangs and all might so this was the easy win. Is Yuku then tased her in the gut, peppered sprayed her, and drop kicked her then continued to run. Is Yuku finally escaped to head to the sewage system to get back to the warehouses, which he was glad that his mask filtered out the smell. Is Yuku finally got back to the warehouse to do some work, which the news revealed the silent trickster was now an A-class villain which is Yuku said, in two days, I went from doing this work to becoming other villain that is now an A-class villain. This is true grinding. Is Yuku finished up his reports to check on night shift staff and then continue to do more paperwork on how much supplies they were going to need. To the world the anarchist is, planning something big. But the silent trickster is distracting the world from what the anarchist was really doing. Izuku then went to the workshop make weapons of certain weapons of certain villains who are certainly in Tartarus, which Izuku chuckled, now we will have party and the recruitment will be more exciting than I usually bring in. Chapter 9, Dobby's Birthday and the Plan Izuku woke, up in his warehouse after completing another challenge, he checked his phone which instantly reads Dobby's birthday. Izuku with wide eyes said, what am I going to do? Izuku looked at the TV to see the top 10 pro heroes on the news which Izuku chuckled, I have an idea. Totoraki Residence Endeavor was at the gym part of the house trying to hopefully get stronger to surpass All Might or live, long enough to surpass him. His daughter, Fuayami said, Dad, there is a reporter out here who want to speak with you. Endeavor's real name is Enji which he went to the door to see what the reporter wanted. The reporter had blue hair and gray eyes but was short. The reporter asked, Mr. Totoraki or can I call you Endeavor? Enji grunted, what is it? The reporter said, I'm here to get your option about you becoming the number one hero. Enji shocked, what did you say? The reporter smiled, you are the number one hero by popular vote and I want your opinion on the matter. Can we head to my office? Enji smiled, yes, let me get ready. The reporter came in while Enji got changed which the reporter talked with Fuayami for a little bit until Enji came back fully dressed. Enji got in, the reporter's black Tesla which the reporter gave Enji a drink after one minute Enji blacked out. Izuku smiled, this is just too easy. Warehouse Saibus Izuku was walking with Dobby who was blindfolded, then Izuku said, Okay Dobby, you can take that silly thing off. Dobby took it off and the two stood in front of a door which is Yuku thought to himself, time to pull an Ellen DeGeneres here. Is Yuku, looked at Dobby, I heard you like Endeavor. Dobby looked at him, is Yuku, you didn't. Is Yuku opened the door to reveal Enji but ass naked, strapped to a chair with a birthday cake on his lap and multiple torture tools and other items surrounding him. Dobby jumped in the air in happiness like a seven-year-old which he hugged Izuku. Izuku said, I love you too man, but you're killing me here. Dobby let go, which Izuku took Dobby to a book next to Endeavor which Izuku said, all the tools are labeled, and this book shows how each tool works and different ways you can torture people. Izuku picked up the nutbuster, which he said, this is the nutbuster, which this is my favorite tool and I know it will be yours as well. Izuku left Dobby to also say, don't kill him, because this is part 1 and I, need him alive to complete part 2. Dobby smiled, no problem. Izuku closed the door to let Dobby have his fun, which he had to check on the latest Namu that is about to done. Izuku check at warehouse T dumb to see high end and Izuku was amazed by this Namu because it could think for itself and still followed orders. High end looked at Izuku. Are you my father? Izuku in shock, I'm sorry but, I'm not your father. That would be sensei. High end asked, then what do I call you? Izuku smiled, you can call me uncle Izuku. High end asked, what am I, uncle Izuku? Izuku then explained some stuff to high end but not all of it, because Izuku doesn't know how high end would react to everything that it takes to create him, I will refer high end as a male because fuck it. Izuku started to, teach him to read, write, and accounting to see how he reacts which Izuku saw how fast high end was learning. 
his Yuku then thought of a crazy idea and got on his The Silent Trickster outfit and got on High End's back to fly around the city. Izuku told High End to not call him Uncle Izuku while wearing this outfit but to call him Trickster when he got in the outfit. Kamino Police HQ The police, were now in a mess. First Endeavor goes to some non-existent interview, Izuku is missing, and this new villain who goes by the silent trickster is causing havoc in Izuku's place. They needed a break in the case, which now they were forced to call Interpol for help. Two Interpol agents came in which the first was a British black hair and blue eyes man then the second one was a blonde American, woman with red eyes. The British said, Hello, I'm George Holmes. The American said, I'm Sarah Smith. All the police officers there was glad that they were getting help until the doors fly opened to reveal Trickster and High End coming in. Trickster had quirky racing bullets to shoot nearby officers while High End attacked officers, beat up heroes that came in, and destroying the building, Izuku saw the two Interpol agents and shot them both which made them quirkless but didn't kill them. Izuku then jumped on High End and they flew off back to the warehouses which Izuku taught High End about his ideology and other stuff. High End was confused on why people would discriminate on others which Izuku said, I don't have an answer for that, people are complicated and sometimes stupid. But they can be redeemable at times. Izuku wrote down some notes on High End's behavior and intelligence as then Izuku would send it to Sensei to look over. Izuku learned he had perfect memory so Izuku took High End to Warehouse Bibliotheca which was a warehouse full of his quirk analysis of every hero, villain, vigilante, and people of interest. Which if High End could memorize it then anyone who, crosses him are screwed. Izuku then took High End to the Namu factory after he read a few books on quirks of some heroes which Izuku thought, I can't believe he learned to read and write in just one hour. As for accounting he just learned the basics which is fine. My curious is satisfied for now with High End, I'm going to try more things, but Izuku gave High End a huge collection of quirk analysis which he will get High End to continue to read them to help him the future, then Izuku sat in his chair with the reports thinking. Izuku then mumbled, I feel like I forgot something. Izuku looked around to find the map of Tartarus to say, that's right. My plan to break some villains out of Tartarus. Izuku looked at the blueprints to mark of villains he will let out in which to leave there, because he did send some villains to Tartarus for being assholes. Izuku put out some lists in his warehouse for his grunts to see, which tells them who is going to go with him to transport the villains and help get them out. Izuku stopped after putting up the lists to say, okay, what am I forgetting now? He stood there for a minute then realized, Dobby. Yeah, Dobby should be done by now. He went to the torture room Dobby was at which he opened it to find Dobby still torturing Endeavor which Izuku shrugged and thought, or maybe not. Izuku got Dobby some food and said, take a break, torturing can make a man hungry and tired. Dobby looked at Izuku to realize he was right, then he took a short break for the food. Dobby asked, what is, the second part? Izuku chuckled, you know what I got Sensei to do with my dad? Dobby smirked, I already love the idea. The two enjoyed their dinner which Dobby asked, hey Izuku, why did you bang not only a girl you had about I don't know three dates with, give or take, and another girl you saved twice and don't know a thing about? Izuku smirked, what are you talking about I read Kyoka's file, and also I let things happen in my life. Dobby grunted the comment then laughed a little bit, Izuku said, come on you should go out with Toga. Dobby looked at him, you know she is about your age and I'm like in my mid-twenties. Izuku said, age is nothing but a number. The two laughed a little bit which Dobby said, I'm already destined for prison for multiple murders but I'm not to prison for, that. Izuku said, don't look at me, I'm not sticking my dick in crazy. The two left Endeavor for a little bit to take a break from smell of blood to sit on some law chairs. Izuku said, in two days, I'm going to break a few villains out of Tartarus as I reveal that the newly infamous villain trickster is actually me. I'm going to be like. Izuku stood up to say, you thought trickster was, going to be some teen. Izuku used his thumb to point at himself. 
But it was me, is you Kumadraya? Dobby asked, are you sure you are allowed to do that? Izuku said, I fuck the rules on an hourly basis, I'm going to do it even if I'm not allowed to do it. Izuku sat down, I need your help as well because of security and whatnot. Dobby smiled, I'm down for that. Dobby asked why hasn't my old man, used his fire yet? Izuku said, I knocked him with a new formula of the quirk erasing drug that erases quirks and puts people to sleep. Dobby chuckled a bit, then Izuku said, okay, I will let you go back your thing. Let me know when you are done, so sensei can make a nom out of him. Dobby went back to Endeavor's room, which Izuku went to his personal warehouse for a quick nap. Kamino Hospital. The hospital was flooded with patients from the massacre on the police station that Trickster attacked earlier today, which the doctors were seeing a lot of police officers and even some pro heroes were now quirkless. Nezu and the top 10 pro heroes, except Endeavor, looked over the security footage of the station to see what happened. They saw Trickster and High End, who actually destroyed the place and his quirks terrified the pros, which they were wondering who this Trickster was. As they discussed it, Nezu looked at the footages of all the trickster appearances until Nezu saw it. Nezu said, I have reason to believe that this trickster is a fan of the anarchist. The pros looked at him, which the two now quirkless Interpol agents came in which George said, can you explain? Nezu, showed his footage of him fighting Mirio, Bubble Girl, and Mirko to say, he or she fights quirkless, carries around a cane that acts similar to the anarchist Stazer Baton and doesn't hesitate to fight a woman. Mirko, still pissed from Trickster beating her ass, said, you're right, the anarchist wouldn't hesitate to do it and he has many fans across the country and world. Since he is missing for, five days now, this person must be thinking that they must cause havoc in his place. George looked at the evidence, you are right, but look how he or she is taking punches. He or she must have a quirk to take those powerful punches that Lemillion is pulling. Sarah said, Trickster might have been thought to be quirkless for a long time and everyone treated him or her like a quirkless person. Then when people realized the he or she indeed have a quirk, but it was too late for an apology. Hawks said, Trickster was most likely inspirited by the anarchist which he or she share a similar pain which with the anarchist gone. There is no one to cause destruction. Everyone thought about it, George asked, I have another theory. They looked at him which he said, my theory is that the, trickster might also be the anarchist. They looked at him in shock, Nezu asked, why? George showed the footage of the anarchist and the trickster side by side, then said, look at the fighting styles, they are too similar. Then Mirko, Bubble Girl and Mirio reported no quirk besides some sort of shock absorption or shock nullification quirk, but look at the anarchist. There was a clip of Izuku, getting a punch from Mirio with 30% of a fan Izuku took it like a boss, then he said, he may be quirkless but he is strong. He might have a suit to help him take more damage and this trickster is just nothing more than to shift our focus from his real plan. The heroes looked at this and realized he might be right but the only way to know is to catch Trickster. The heroes and Nezu let the Interpol agents go back to rest, they then got out of the hospital to plan to find this Trickster and bring him to justice as well as find Izuku to do the same. All Might was thinking about Izuku and how he created him to be this monster and how he inspires many quirkless people. All Might was seeing Bakugo train with Shinzo under Aizawa to fight Quirkless but All Might knows that he wasn't ready, to fight Izuku. Izuku can beat Bakugo in every way because Izuku has been Quirkless his entire life. He had trained a lot longer than Bakugo. He defeated Bakugo who had a powerful quirk, Izuku also without armor can take Mirio's 30% of fat punch and still fight. Bakugo was still learning to live his life as a quirkless person, when the news revealed that he could still walk because Izuku missed the spot, they were receiving threats from Izuku. Izuku doesn't do death threats, he wrote how he was going to make Bakugo ask for death instead. All Might was concerned for Bakugo and with the news revealing him to be the first quirkless hero, it pissed Izuku off to no end. All Might could feel Izuku's rage, All Might thought. 
Something inside young Madraya must have thought that he was supposed to be the first quirkless hero but now his former childhood bully is getting the chance instead. I must find him and try to convince him to surrender himself. All Might was confused when it came to his Yuku, it was his fault he ended up like this, but he has done a lot of wrong to where some people won't forgive him. His Yuku hasn't killed a single person but injured them and or made them quirkless. He still had hope for his Yuku but he needed to prove it to the world, which he, Mirio, and Nezu had a talk. Nezu agrees if his Yuku was caught then he will be given a chance to make up for what he has done by becoming a hero, but he still has to do some stuff. Is Yuku's location is Yuku sneezed, someone was thinking about making me a hero, probably Johnny Bravo. Is Yuku got up to stretch then looked at the reports then said, we will finish the challenge early tomorrow morning. Well I'm going to beat up little dick now to see how good this quirkless hero really is. Is Yuku looked at the trickster outfit to look at the new modification he hasn't used yet, the sword that came of the cane. Is Yuku took the sword to a scarf that was exactly like Eraserhead's scarf to slice it clean, which is Yuku chuckled. Just testing, now time to test it on Bakugo or should I call him Bakugo? Is Yuku got the outfit on and headed to UA to give Bakugo a good beat down. UA everyone was fast asleep, and the lights were off in every building, well one person wasn't sleeping yet. That person was Bakugo which he has been training harder to beat the shit out of his Yuku when he sees him again. His Yuku looked out from a few yards to see him training which he thought to himself, sloppy, just sloppy fighting in general. His Yuku pulled out a new device he had his grunts working on, the EMP grenade. The grenade was supposed to make an EMP to take out power from a one mile radius for three hours. Which is Yuku pulled the pin then threw it over the walls of which it activated in midair, which is Yuku jumped the wall to land on, feet. Is Yuku looked around to see Bakugo who was now looking at him, Bakugo then used his scarf on his Yuku which is Yuku grabbed the scarf to then pull Bakugo toward him. Bakugo ran to him to throw a punch at him but his Yuku grabbed his hand to punch him in the face. Bakugo asked, what do you want you bastard? His Yuka was the slain trickster right now so he just pointed at him with his finger, which, Bakugo shouted, I'm not giving up without a fight. His Yuka taste him with the cane then beat him up with said cane, until he looked over to see Shido Totoraki. His Yuka dropped a smoke grenade to then climb over the wall to run away, which his Yuka thought, he is causing a problem, but I believe he could be a great villain when Tamora and Dobby talk to him, which after a few blocks he got hungry which he just walked into a dinner to order some food and drinks. He took off the bottom part of his mask to eat and drink, which people around him looked at him, that he just walked in like he was a normal person. Izuka wasn't going to say a word about it because he didn't give a single fuck, then a person sat in front of him. Izuku looked up to see, midnight which she said, well look who we have. Izuku raised his index finger as a sign of let him eat before he will deal with your shit. Midnight said, indeed a rude little Shota here. Izuku shrugged, which Midnight asked, can you speak? Izuku nodded in a sign of yes, Midnight glared at him. But you don't want to. Izuku put his thumbs up to let her know she was right, she sighed, you, remind me of the anarchist, but if he didn't talk. Are you a fan of his or something? Izuku shrugged which didn't help Midnight in the slightest, which he was just trolling her at this point. Izuku quickly got his mask on to prepare for a fight, which Midnight looked at him, trick question, do you hate the quirked or the government? Izuku nodded in a yes motion which still didn't help her, answer which she got up but Izuku dropped a flashbang and ran off. Izuku didn't feel like fighting Midnight today as much fun it sounds, he liked to fight her as the anarchist so they can talk so dirty that the TV reports would just be bleeps on the entire conversions. It was a competition to see who was freakier or dirtier than the other really, which is Yuku found the conversion between the two, funny as hell. But he had to be careful sometimes because one time he mentioned how would he love to be a part of her dungeon and a shit ton of fanfics of him and her were made by the people who were watching in their fight on the streets. One of those fanfics was made by Toga which fight on the streets. 
One of those fanfics was made by Toga which he found disturbing yet so interesting to not look away from. Izuku came back to the warehouses to finally look at, the final steps of completing the latest things of the challenge, which he looked at it then said, ok guys after this one, we are done with these challenges and we can go back to our normal production. They cheered a little bit then he went to check on Dobby who was still torturing Endeavor which is Yuku though to himself, I think my gift to Dobby was too good, but Endeavor will still be used in, part 2. Izuku went to his office bed to sleep and call it today, which he was exciting to pull his stunt, 